So we'll talk now a little about, about the reels that I use for pike fishing. Now the main go-to is a bait caster. Now this is the Lou Super Duty 300. Um, ergonomics of, of, of these reels are fantastic. You can use them all day and fish comfortably with me all day without having any aches or pains in your hands. Um, and the accuracy as well, that's the main thing. You can be so much more accurate with a bait caster. Well, I find I can anyway, personally. The gear ratio on a bait caster is a lot higher as well, or generally, than fixed spools. Now, this is very important if you're retrieving heavy lures all day. I mean, you can get them lures in a lot quicker. And if you see a fish all of a sudden crash at a bait shoal or shoal, you can sight fish and you can retrieve that lure really quickly and get it straight on the money. Um, and that'll hopefully get you a fish quite quick. Another thing with the bait caster as well, in my experience, the the bait caster's handle a larger diameter braid, a lot heavier spray constraint, a lot better than a fixed spool. It comes off a lot easier because the spool actually spinning in the same direction as you're casting, rather than coming off the opposite way as, as, as like a fixed spool does. Having said that, I still use the fixed spool. Now these are a perfect starting point for a novice angler or for those who just can't get on with bait casters. I still use these when it comes to using sort of lighter lures as chatter baits or a sm smaller jig and it allows me to have more control over these smaller type of baits. So there you go, that's my real choices and why I use them. Right, so now I'll have a quick look at wire traces. Now the two main traces I use is the single strand titanium which I tend to use more for jerk baits such as sliders and sweepers. Um, and the other one for a more supple trace is the seven strand titanium. Um, the reason I use these two is the single strand helps a lot when you're re retrieving the hard bits. And um, what it tends to happen is your lure will want to sweep past the clip. Um, but by having the stiff, stiff strand titanium, this then pushes the trace a lot, a lot further forward. Hopefully preventing any more tangles. With the seven strand, trace now i use this more for my jigging or for replicants you know most a lot of the swim baits and soft baits and uh, the reason for this is that it just the lure acts a lot more natural on the retrieve um, especially when it's sinking as well when the lure starts to sink it comes down you start the retrieve it just, it just keeps everything a lot more you know it flows a lot better so they're the main two, two traces that i use for my pike fishing and why So in winter, when you're targeting pike, it actually gets a little bit more simple. So when, the, when the river's up like it is today, what happens is it pushes fish in, into fresh undergrowth, especially with the prey fish as well. Now, prey fish aren't going to hang in raging currents or on, in shallow water at this time of year. They're going to seek out deeper water, and so are the pike. Now, when the river, river rises, your margins become a lot deeper, so your fish will tend to hide there. Because as we know, pike, they're, they're opportunists, you know, if, if yourself, you're going to hide and attack something, you're going you're gonna to get, gonna get behind something, and that's all the fish are doing as well. And what the margin offers the pike as well is cover from the current. It creates ma big, big slacks and eddies, and that's where the pike get in. They don't want to use their energy. They want to save that for the, for the attack of the fish. So whether you're from a boat or a bank, you can sort of target these areas and hopefully Put a few more fish on the bank. One of the most important aspects of pike fishing is knowing what depth you are on a river. Now, prime example is behind me, we've got 18 feet of water, and not so far up there, we've got 9 feet of water. Now, the main go to lure for me on a, on a river with de depths like this is a wobble replicant. Now, the reason for this is that you can count your lure down, you can almost work out your depth as well with a replicant, counting it down. Um, but behind me here, there's 18 feet, but we've just had a fish and we caught that over in two feet of water. So it just shows that to have a variety of lures and try different depths throughout the day will help you catch a lot more fish. Now, if, if I wanted to use the more shallower lures, then I would go for such as like the shallow replicants or the pro shads. These work in a, in, a, in a lot slower fashion and you can work them a lot higher in the water without cranking them too fast. Whereas a replicant, if you want to work a replicant in a, in a shallow water, you've really, got to, you've really got to work the lure a lot harder than the others. 
which sometimes when it's quite cold like it is today, the water which is like five degrees, it can put fish off, not wanting to chase so much. So the starting point with the river, the most important thing is to know the depth. My starting point is always a replicant wobble because you can count down the depth that roughly 55 gram is like a foot a second. So if I'm casting out, count to 10, it's at the bottom, I know it's roughly, roughly 10 feet. Gradually throughout the day, I can say I want to fish half, half the depth, count to five, work that section, and gradually work my way up to the surface. If I'm getting hits on the surface and I'm thinking it's a bit too fast, then that's when I can move over to the shallow replicant or the pro shad, like I said earlier. But as a starting point, these are fantastic to know your depths. So when making lure choices, the other thing to think about is the size of the lure, not just the pattern or, or the shape. Now the size of the lure can be, you could drop down, you know, to a sort of a five inch size for the pike or even smaller. If, if they're feeding on the, them, them particular size prey fish, whether, whether it be roach or, or whatever. Um, but another thing to think about is if you've been thrashing your lure all day and not a lot's happened, you know, and you've tried everything, sometimes I find is to put a, a larger lure on. And this can be, whether, whether it's a big pro shard or the big pike replicants, and what this, what this normally does, it induces um, a take out of aggression rather than attacking for food. Because if you've been thrashing smaller lures around and you're not getting nothing, the chances are they're not feeding. There's not a lot you can do about it. But if you're putting a larger lure across a pike's face and it feels threatened because it thinks it's another, another pike or you know, a larger species, then they quite often attack that lure out of aggression and obviously thus catching the pike. So just that, that little tip could just help you from, you know, turn the bad day into a good day really. Let's bring the house down.